softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fast Pitch TV Show. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, YouTube, or another video sharing site, please check out our website, fastpitch.tv. It's the place to find all of our past episodes and a place to keep up with our future episodes, too. Now, also, if you have a Roku box or a Boxy box hooked up to your television set, don't forget now you can watch the Fast Pitch TV Show on both of those devices, okay? So sit back on your couch and start watching it, you don't have to watch on your computer anymore. Now, earlier this year, I was in Louisville, Kentucky for Softball Con. Softball Con was a great softball conference, and one of the clinics I filmed while I was there was with Shane Weaver. Now, Shane's clinic was titled Indoor Practice Tips and Drills That Work. Now, I'm going to bring you this clinic in three parts, okay? So let's start with part one of Shane's clinic right after word from our sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham, you just put a cool $30 in your pocket. All right, offensive drills. I'm gonna get into the, the meat now. Um, I'm sure several of you already use a, the, what I call the baby bat to start off with. Um, we break everybody down, uh, again, every day, starting out with the, the bottom hand and then top hand drills. And again, can't tell you enough how much the, the keeping the hands in and you know, a compact swing is gonna help you know, make your hitters more consistent. Um, we'll start with, and again, you've probably seen this quite a bit, I'll bring them down to the knee, lock the, the front leg out. The position of the tee is something as a coach that you probably need to watch. Players will start hitting the, the tee, knocking it out of whack, and eventually it gets out here. Okay, This is something I consistently have to watch to make sure that the girls have it in the right position to make the mechanic work the way that you want it to. So bottom hand, we're going to lead with the, the elbow here. Uh, you can have a choke on the bat if you want, but we're watching to keep the front shoulder in on this. Uh, again, my girls, we have a problem. Again, when they come up through Little League system, haven't had a lot of formal training, you're gonna, we, we see a lot of that. And so it takes me quite a bit of time once they get to the high school, uh, especially if they've not had any lessons to get them out of the, the shoulder pull. So we'll lead with the elbow. You hear different types of hitting, and I'm going to say this uh, right off the bat. I like to keep my, hit, my girl's hands above the plane of the ball. Now, I'm not going to argue with you know, people that it works for in their Olympians. So, uh, this is just one method that I found that works for us. We're going to keep our hand above the plane, keep the elbow soft, keep the shoulder from rotating out, and then make contact with the ball. And as you can see, I probably need to be a little bit farther back here. And then we'll unlock the wrist. I'll have my girl stop there. Um, we won't go through the whole drill uh, full tilt until we've got this part down. You see a lot of girls that will you know, have a stiff wrist. So we'll go to the unlock here so that we get the snap of the bat. Then we'll go to stage two, which is the extension, and then we'll go with the high finish. So I break that drill down into three parts. Especially if you, and even after weeks of practice, you're going to notice when girls get down to do the drill, they're just going to go through it. They may shorten their swing up, not get to extension, or they may go ahead and cast the arm out and get long. Uh, on all of these drills, I have a focal point where the ball needs to go up the middle. Okay, so girls get feedback. 
if the ball's going. Now again, the, these are the beginning drills. This isn't an inside pitch. But if you're able to stay inside of an inside pitch, then you're probably going to get gap more times than pulling off of it. And we've all seen the foul balls that go over the third base dugout. So that's an advantage uh, just as calling pitches if I see a kid that can't keep their hands in, everything's got to pull and yank. So for this drill, we're going to try to keep our hands inside and our goal is for the ball to go up the middle. <coughs> Once we do that, we'll switch over to the top hand drill. I'll have them put their hands on the bat, get their grip. Just as a reminder, I'll have them put their uh, left hand on the right shoulder. Again, to try to keep the, the front one from pulling. Again, here we're going to want to keep the hand inside the ball. This is my dominant hand. So I call this my balance hand. Uh, it, if this drops down, then that's where you're going to have, you know, the, the uppercut or, you know, there's all kinds of different terminologies for it. We're going to want to go palm up inside the ball and we're going to punch this the same way and we're going to want to stay up the middle. Now, when you're dealing with the top hand, there's going to be a little rotation of the body. There has to be in the swing, and that's okay. So top hand, punch, and then go to extension as well. And again, when both hands start working, you're going to get the unlock of the wrists, which generates the bat speed to meet the ball and then carry it. So inside, here, and then we're going to unlock again and punch on through that to the extension and roll. And then I'm going to finish over as well. Um, so, oh yeah, again on the knee or above, uh, and this is Eastern Kentucky adjustment. Uh, there are all kinds of things that you can buy to make you keep the backside up. If a girl's having a problem dropping their top hand, or if it's weak, if it's not going forward to initiate the swing. I've actually got like a two by six board. We'll place it on top of the bucket. Uh, imagine this is the board. We'll put the ball just above it. And we'll have our girls do the drill here so that they will get instant feedback and they get quite a bit of feedback on this drill. When we stand up, we'll just put like a box underneath of the bucket and then raise it up. Biggest problem uh, I've found with my kids, you can practice laying off the high pitch. I don't like to swing at rise balls. I don't like, you know, my girls to swing at them. Tough pitch to hit unless you can keep your bat up and, and get it before it jumps up here. They tend to do that anyway. Okay, what I found. So anything on the upper half, if we're going to swing at it, which is kind of the way I look at it, uh, we keep trying lay off, lay off, lay off. Okay, if we're going to swing, then let's get our mechanics uh, and get this top hand under control so that we can come straight across it and not drop and get the pop up or strike out. So uh, from this same drill, if the bat hits the board, girls are going to get their feedback from it. <coughs> um, contact to extension, three-stage drill from the soft toss. Um, this is a drill where we'll have a coach or a player, and again, getting girls to learn how to soft toss, uh, again, that's a challenge. We actually have to have practice because you're you're going to get all kinds of that. We want the ball to be tossed somewhere in the strike zone in consistent nature for this. Um, obviously, in, unless you have a ton of coaches around, if you've got several things going on, you're going to need somebody else to be able to do the soft toss. So, getting that to where uh, it's where the hitter needs the ball to to hit is important. Uh, for the three stage, we're going to have somebody tossing the ball. With the regular bat, I'm going to work on just going to contact with it. 
Uh, I like to do this drill once we get outside as well on a live field. Um, one thing that I've found that the girls will uh, respond to is feedback that they can see. If you've got a compact swing here and you unlock, you can hit a ball out of the infield it, on a line drive. Yes, we want them to go through the ball to extension and finish, but this to me is the most important part that I can get to my, that I want to get conveyed to my girls. So, we're going to start with the soft toss, contact, and then I have them check where their arms are. If we've got a nice flex in the elbows and we're not already extended here, I have them check that first. Did they just come here and fit or tighten their fist up or did they unlock on it? So there's okay, it's okay if there's a little back in. So um, that's the, the first stage. We want to check rotation, heel high. We want to make sure we don't have the, the bend, the shift in the hips here. We want a good balance in the body. So those are things we check for first off. <clears throat> After they've done that, checked everything, let's push through to extension. And then that's another tough part where I've seen working with my girls. When they have the stiff hands, sometimes you get that number instead of the smooth roll through the ball. So that's another part we want to check. And then we let the bat finish its natural course. And I like the, the high finish over the shoulder. Um, when we do that, it's, I convey it as just a little bend in the elbow going fishing. <clears throat> now, something that uh, I picked up from coach at Alabama, Pat Murphy, do it in reverse. So start where your finish is, go back to extension. Now this is the tricky part that I found with girls. Bring yourself back to contact. And then here. If they can do it forward, then they can do it backward. Seems to help them feel through the process themselves. Again, body awareness, uh, that's something that you know I, I found is a challenge. A lot of times when girls haven't had uh, positive uh, hitting lessons. Um, inside outside T uh, with the swing initiating on the call. Um, here basically we're going to have a home plate, an outside pitch, an inside pitch, and again make sure the T's are positioned where you want the girls to make contact. You want the outside ball to travel deeper. Uh, I use center of the body or back hip for contact point. Uh, on this drill, I'm gonna try not to hit this off. We have the girls focus their, their heads, like get a pretend where the pitcher would be. A coach or a player will call in or out. And at that point, we're, what we're trying to do, when a pitcher releases a ball, it, through psychology, I'm thinking the girls have a moment of anxiety. So I'm trying to do this to calm them down so that they relax and pick up wherever the ball's gonna be. Again, you say in or out, a lot of times you get a jerk in the body. And again, that, it's just something that we do to, to kind of get in their head and, and try to get them to a point where they're calm during their swing. And if they start calming their swing down, then it will happen a lot more fluidly. So again, this is probably as much of a mental preparation drill. Obviously, inside and outside, you're gonna get feedback on where the ball goes, uh, it, if it's to right field, or if they you know, hit the ball up the middle or to the left side on the inside catch. Um, 
inside outside tees into the sock net. Okay, after uh, another drill that we'll do that there won't be a call for, we'll have a net set up over here, a net set up over here, and again, we've got the, the inside building with batting cages, so if they miss the net, it's not going to break windows or whatnot. So, <laughs> and that would have happened many, many times. So, for feedback uh, and visualization, we're, we're going to set up the, the sock nets there and have the girls work on getting instant feedback on, am I hitting this pitch where I'm supposed to hit it? Um, the ball drop on the board. Okay, so if you guys can imagine, I've got a bucket, a box, and I've got a board about this level here. Uh, be careful if you decide to try this, okay? I'm gonna just drop the ball, and the girl's goal is to hit it before it hits the board. Again, uh, just working, obviously you're never gonna see a pitch come from up here, but we're just trying to change up, uh, focus on vision, and focus on working a, a correct swing going forward with bat head instead of dropping it. And again, it helps timing as well, or it has with us. Have you considered hosting a tournament for your team or organization? VTD Sports is a company that helps people like you host events by providing online tools to make your job easier, liability insurance to cover you in the facility, and marketing for your events. If you're ready to host your 100th or even your first, please check us out at vtdsports.com or give our offices a call at 214-331-2500. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Now, to find out more about SoftballCon, just go to softballcon.net. Now, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android phone, you need to get the Fast Pitch TV Show app today. Just go to your phone's app store, search softball, and you'll find it, okay? Don't forget to check out our website, fastpitch.tv. Become a fan of the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash fastpitchtv, and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash fastpitchtv. That's it for today's show. Goodbye, and thanks for watching. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network.